everyone, Luke here and welcome back to the channel. So in my last video I made a nice custom computer case which I'm absolutely in love with. And in this video what we're going to be doing is filling it with computer components. So the point of this is to make a budget bill for under £100 that's good at running things like games and it will be good at doing a little bit of video editing too. So let's go take a look at the components for the bill. Okay, so I'm going to quickly run through all the components in this setup and tell you how much it actually costs to buy. So, this motherboard that I'm running is an Acer MS87869 motherboard and it's an LGA1150 socket. And this actually cost me £11.94, which I thought was a really good deal. Okay, for this next bit, um, I actually managed to get a CPU and RAM bundle off a friend. And um, it did come with the motherboard, but the pins on the motherboard were bent, and even though I tried to resurrect them, I couldn't actually get the system to post. So, for this RAM and this CPU, I paid £20. Um, and the CPU that I'm running is an Intel Core i5-4440, which is a 4th gen CPU. It's got 4 cores, and I'm pretty sure it's got 6 to 8 threads. I can't remember off the top of my head. And then it comes with two sticks of RAM, one's an 8 gig stick and one's a 4 gig stick, so that gives me 12 gigabytes in total. And they're running at 1600 megahertz, so that's going to be plenty enough for me anyway. Okay, so for the storage, I actually managed to pick up this one terabyte Seagate hard drive for £14 for the computer store next door. So that is going to do a nice job storing all the useless files that I usually store on my computers. And then I managed to get hold of this crucial SSD off eBay. And this cost me £15.75 including delivery. Um, and it's a 128 gigabyte crucial, crucial drive. So that means I'm going to have plenty of storage and a nice boot up drive for my Windows. Okay, and then here's the power supply right here. And this is just a, uh, it's a Tegan. Um, it's a 600 watt power supply, but it's 80 plus bronze rated, which means it's going to be really nice to put in this system. And I managed to get that off the same friend who sold me this uh, CPU motherboard slash uh, RAM bundle. And this also cost me 20 quid on top. And then last but not least, here's the graphics card. And this is a GTX 1050 Ti. It's running 4 gigs of uh, GDDR5 uh, VRAM. And uh, this actually got donated to me, believe it or not. So I didn't pay a penny for this. And um, I want to thank Al for that. So this is also going into the system. And that's pretty much all the components. So let's bring up the case and let's start installing all the bits and bobs. Okay, so with my computer builds, I usually like to start with the CPU. And it's really easy to install, but it has to go in a specific way. So there will be an indication mark on your bottom left of the CPU, and there will be the same indication mark on your board. And all you want to do is make sure that they are aligned properly. And when you're installing your CPU, you just want to make sure that you slowly just drop it in. You don't want to put any pressure on it, and then just close it up. And that will do all the work for you. There we go, so that's the CPU installed. Okay, so the next thing to install is the RAM. And if you take a look at your stick, it's gonna have a pretty distinctive notch in it. And all you wanna do is line that up with the notch in your dim slots. And there we go, that's the RAM installed. So the next thing to do is to put the CPU fan on. That means this will just keep the CPU nice and cool so it doesn't overheat. And for this, you're going to need something called thermal grease or thermal paste. It's sold under a few different names. But all you want to do is put a little pea-sized dot right in the middle. Then what happens is when you put the uh, CPU fan down, it will just spread it evenly anyway. And you just want to find where this plugs in, which is right there. And then just align that up. And now I'm going to screw this down. And there we go, that is now the CPU fan installed. So I've taken the side panels off my computer and if you look straight down, you should have these little standoffs right here, which that's what your motherboard actually screws into. So they should just line up really nicely. And now they're all lined up, just screw them down.
like so. So I'm going to screw the rest of this down and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now the motherboard's installed, how I usually like to proceed next is to connect the front panel connectors because these can be quite fiddly and uh, once everything's in there it's going to be a bit tight to move everything around. So, let's grab our front panel connectors. Okay, so this bit is going to be a bit different for all computers. Um, so what I would recommend doing is going online, searching up your motherboard and then at the end of the search term put uh, front panel pin layout and it should tell you where everything goes. So, Right, so now we've done that it's time to install the power supply and this will literally just slide in and then get screwed down like so. So I'm going to screw that down and I'll show you how to connect this all up together. Right, so now that we've got our power supply installed, we're now going to connect all the bits up to the motherboard. And realistically, there's only two things that you've got to connect up. One is the 24 pin, depending on your motherboard, it might be 20 pin, but on this specific one, that bit unslides just in case. But on this board, it's a 24 pin connector, and that, it can only go in one way. And you literally just make sure that that is seated correctly. And then right over here, I don't know if you can see that. Let me take, let me give you a closer look. And then right there, that four pin connector is what actually powers the CPU. So I've got this thing right here and um, this has got six pins, but six pins is usually used for slightly bigger motherboards. And we just connect that in there like so. So now I've got all them bits connected, usually what I do once I'm at this point is take it over to a monitor, connect everything up and see if the system will actually uh, turn on and give some sort of image on the display. And when we know it boots up and it's giving you some BIOS, we can actually attach the graphics card and clean everything up a little bit. So let's go test if it works. So all I've done is I've attached a power cable and a HDMI cable to see if the system will post. So let's turn it on. We get a positive beep, and there is the Acer uh, post menu. So there's something else I should mention, and before we start putting more components into this computer build, what we want to do is unplug the power supply and hold the power down for 10 to 15 seconds. And what this does, it discharges any, any power going through the uh, computer and minimizes the risk of actually frying any of the components. So now that's done, we can finish building this computer. Okay, so now it's time to install the graphics card. And you want to make sure that you've got enough space on this bit right here, because usually you just sort of have to bend and pull them out. And then you want to look for the notch on your graphics card and stick it into place. Make sure it lines up really nicely. And now that, is installed. Perfect. So on some graphics cards there might be a six pin connector, sometimes it's a four pin connector, depending on your graphics card. If it's a low profile, usually it draws the power from the motherboard. If it's something a bit bigger like this, it needs to have a little bit more power to get the thing running. And all you want to do is find your, well for, in my case it will be a six pin, and plug that in. Like so, awesome. And then all we do is screw that down and that should be sat in there perfectly. Okay, so now we got our graphics card installed, I've decided to tidy up the wires just a little bit. And all I've done is fed them through this gap into the front panel, so when it shuts, um, it's gonna hide all the wires and you're actually not gonna be able to see them, which is kinda cool. So now, we're pretty much done with this build. There's only uh, one more thing left to do, and that is to install the hard drive. And this is really easy, all you want is a, uh, a SATA cable, and I don't know what this connector is called, but one of these two. And in this computer specifically, there isn't anywhere to mount this. So I'm going to have to find a spot where this can screw in, but also be kind of hidden. So I'm going to figure that out, attach it, and then once we've done that, we can boot up the system and try and run some stuff. So it turns out there was a spot to mount the hard drive, but I just couldn't see it at first. So basically it presses against where um, the front panel connects, and right on the side there's screws which hold it in. 
I didn't quite realise that. So what I'm going to do is screw this in, connect it up. I've got my SSD down here, screwed in, connected up as well. Um, and this gets connected up in the exact same way. So, let's get this finished. Let's try and boot it up and do something with it. Now I've got my computer on the desk, I just want to make sure that it boots up and it works. So let's see if it actually boots. What I'll do is press the button. The lights come on. And it's up on the screen. How awesome is that? So I think that is just lovely. And it was a really fun computer build to do. Um, and I'm really hoping it packs some serious power for under £100. If you guys are interested in the technical specs and the benchmarks of this build, there will be another video on that, so make sure you stay tuned. With that being said, this brings me to the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have uh, enjoyed building this machine. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them all. Anyway guys, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you later.